guys and welcome back to my channel this week my name is Priscilla I'm a Nigerian women's wear designer based in the UK in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to sew this really really cool really trendy and really chic palazzo trousers they are really wide legs so if this is something that you would like to change in yours make sure to see the pattern tutorial because then you have the freedom to adjust the style to suit your preference and your taste if you haven't seen the pattern tutorial already I'm going to be linking it down below so you make sure to check that out first before you come on here to see how I put everything together also if you haven't subscribed to this channel make sure to do so it is free and you get to know every single week whenever I have new videos up on the channel turn on the notification bell as well so you are notified via email whenever I have a new video up on here so if you'd like to see how I sew this really cool trouser in Ankara print make sure to watch up until the end I ended up using about two meters of the main print on the outside and two meters of the lining on the inside you will need a short zip and interfacing to stiffen the waistband and you're good to go let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below and i'll see you guys in my next one i will leave the link for the pattern tutorial down below as mentioned and it's quite detailed quite straight to the point and hopefully easy to follow so if you haven't seen that already please go check that out so you know how i went about creating these patterns for this wide leg palazzo trouser so now i'm going to go on ahead and pin down my pattern i'm going to be cutting out my different trouser panels as you can see i've pinned down my main trouser leg as well as my waistband and i'm just cutting out the back trouser leg as you can see here my pattern already has a one centimeter seam allowance all the way around and a two centimeter hem allowance along the bottom so i don't need to add anything extra around my pattern when i'm cutting so I'm just cutting out the waistbands like so. You need to cut two pairs of each waistband. That is for the front and for the back. And also remember to cut your notches because this trouser has a few panels. So you want to remember what actually fits into what. So I'm just going in here to notch the bottom of my pocket like so using my tiny scissors where my hem seam is, where the dart of my trousers should fit into the waistband do that for the front for the back and any other panels that you need to notch so i also went ahead to cut my lining and for the front what i did to get a full front lining was i taped down the pocket bag to this side of the front pattern because you know we cut the original one to get the edge of the side pocket once you tape down that pocket bag in place you have the full waistline of your front trouser to work with so I've pinned that down like so and I'm just cutting out my lining. This is for my front. I folded this particular piece of fabric in two. So I'll have two lining pieces when I'm done. Two for the front and two for the back. So I've cut my front as you can see here. I've also gone ahead and I've cut my back linings. And this lining is soft and silky so it will feel nice and smooth on the inside of my trouser. So I also went ahead to cut my main front. As you can see, the front is the one that has that edge because that is where the side pocket is going to sit. I also cut my main back. I cut two of them, one for each side of the leg of the trouser. I also went ahead to cut my pocket pieces and my waistbands. For my waistbands, I went ahead to reinforce them with interfacing. This just makes the waistband nice and stiff on the waist of your trouser so they don't fold when you sit or walk around when you wear this trouser so i have my pocket facing which is the one with the little angle and the pocket bag which is a full one on this right side here so the first step we're going to be working on is to sew the pocket and the pocket sits into the front like this so i'm just getting my pocket facing for this side and i'm putting right sides together and i'm going to be joining them along this edge here so i'm just going to take this in my machine and i'm going to be sewing the pocket facing to the front panel of the trouser along this edge that we cut out when we made the pattern so remember when you get to corners to leave your needle in lift up the footer and then turn to continue sewing until you get to the end of your seam so now that i'm done with this side of the pocket facing and the front i'm just cutting a tiny snip along these corners here so it's easier for me to turn this pocket facing into the inside of the trouser with ease but before i do that i'm going to take this and i'm going to do like a tiny edge stitch to ensure that the pocket facing sits on the inside of the trouser and it doesn't just 
flop to the front when you wear or use this trouser pocket. So I'm sewing on a very close 0.3 centimeter edge stitch. This is something that if you're not used to, I suggest you just do very slowly because it's really nice and it's very fulfilling when it comes out very neat on your seam. So I'm just going in here, finishing up this edge stitch here like so, remembering to do my back stitch to secure my seam and this is what it should look like. As mentioned earlier on, this edge stitch ensures that the facing stays on the inside of your pocket and it just makes the pocket on the right side look really nice and really smooth. So I'm going to take the pocket bag that matches with this side and I'm putting right side of the pocket bag to the right side of the facing and we're going to be joining this curved edge on its own, not to the tra main trouser itself, just these two pieces. So I'm going to be sewing on a one centimeter seam allowance. You can start from the top or from the bottom edge, whichever works for you. Sew around this curved end until you get to the edge. So this is this side of this pocket all done. It looks really good already. You can press this particular seam if you want to so it stays nice and flat. And with that pocket bag fixed, you have sort of the full waistline of this side of the front fixed and done. So by the time you repeat it for the other side, you have your two pockets for your trouser sewn and ready to go. So next I'm going to be sewing the darts for the back of the trouser and a method I like to use to transfer darts is I get my pattern piece and I sort of match all my edges together and then I take a pin and I transfer the dart point from the paper onto the fabric. So I lift both panels like so and I mark with a chalk the exact point that the pin comes out through. So I mark for the two panels of the back, so left and right. I'm marking on the wrong side of the fabric so there is no chalk showing, even after I've sewn my dart. So I'm just matching notched points together like so and folded it in such a way that it connects to the dot that we just made with the chalk. I'm going to do this for the two sides of my back trouser dart and then I'm going to take this to my machine and I'm going to sew both darts using a normal straight stitch remembering to do my back stitch at the beginning and at the end now when it comes to sewing darts you have the freedom to when you get to the end instead of doing like a back stitch to run off some thread and then tie a knot to secure your seam or you just do a back stitch if you are really sure of going back into that exact seam so now that we've done the back darts i'm going to go ahead and join the center back seam of my trouser but remember to leave the top about 20 centimeter or 8 inches from the top open because this is where your zip is going to sit so i'm just going to sew this to my domestic machine on a one centimeter or however much seam allowance you have just join up that back center of the trouser together so it's ready to fix to the front so now i'm going to repeat the same thing with the front i'm putting my two front panels together along the center front seam i'm just joining them together on the top edge on the bottom edge and i'm going to pin this center front seam together so when i stitch it up we have one piece that is ready to attach to the back along the sides and the inner leg so i'm going to sew up the center front seam on a one centimeter seam allowance using my normal straight stitch remembering to do my back stitch at the beginning and at the end of my seam to secure this stitch with that all done this is what the front is looking like just remember to pleat in your front dart because when i was making the pattern for this particular front panel we opened up the darts at the bottom edge so sewing it would have been near impossible so just remember to pleat it in the left and on the right hand side in whichever direction that you are comfortable with so next up i'm going to be joining my front and my back together along the outer and the inner leg so i'm going to lay my back panel onto my front putting right sides together and i'm going to pin the side seam from the beginning from the top all the way to the hem and i'm going to pin my inner leg so by the time i take this in my machine i know with one continuous stitch i can sew up the entire inner leg of the trouser from left to the middle all the way to the right and i can stitch up my side seams in which my zip um sorry in which my pockets facing and pocket bag sits into 
So I'm going to take this piece to my machine all pinned up and ready to go and I'm going to be sewing on a one centimeter seam allowance using a normal straight stitch. It's quite a long seam so listen to some music, have some fruits, just enjoy the process of making this trouser. So I'm going ahead now to sew my inner trouser leg like so. You, you, you really need to use one seam from one side all the way to the end. So with that, you finished joining the inner leg of the trouser. So this is the main trouser or stitch top, side seams, inner leg. So we have one trouser piece that you can actually test at this point to see if you like the fit and if you like the length or if there's any corrections you want to make before going ahead to work on the waistband of this trouser. For the waistbands, you need to join the sides and the center fronts together. Remember to leave the center back open because that's where the zip will sit into. So you should have two sets of waistbands. So by the time you join them together along the top seam, you have a nice finished bagged out waistband that is sort of fabric on the inside and on the right side. So I've done that. I've joined the sides and I've joined the center fronts and I'm going to go ahead and pin together the top of my waistband so by the time I sew them up along this inner curve here which is the top and we turn this inside out and give it a nice press we have a waistband that is ready to be fixed into the waistline of the trouser so I'm just sewing here on a one centimeter seam allowance using a normal straight stitch joining my waistband together and once that's all done I'm going to take this to my iron and press the seams to relax all of the edges so it will look like this so it looks like half of a circle at this point but by the time you fold it back in along the side seam you see sort of the waist curve and where the waistband would sit into so once that is all done this is ready to be fixed into the waistline of your trouser and i'm going to move on to the next step so i'm going to grab my trouser and fold open my waistband like so you can pin whichever size is really the same thing and i'm going to pin along this edge like so so i'm pinning center front to center front at this point i'll pin side seam to side seam and then center back to center back at this point we only need to sew one sort of edge of this waistband to the waistline the other edge is going to be fixed to the lining so i'm going to take this to my machine and i'm going to join the waistband to the waistline of the trouser and i'm sewing on a one centimeter seam allowance because that's how much seam allowance i gave my waistband as well and i'm going to be using a normal straight stitch on regular tension so as i'm sewing along the way i'm remembering to ease curved and together since both seams are sort of curved, the waistband and the waistline of the trouser itself. So this is what it should look like right at this point. If you fold it back in, so if you fold the other waistband in like this, this is what the waistline of your trouser should look like at this point. And this is ready for your zip. You can decide to press that waist seam first before you fix your zip or you can fix your zip before pressing. So I'm going to grab my short zip that's about 20 centimeters long. You can decide to use something longer if you want. Just ensure it is beyond your hip line so it's easy to get into and out of this trouser. So the way I'd like to fix my zips is I pin one side of the zip tape to one side of this seam like so and I pin the other side to the other corresponding edge. So by the time I join edges of the seam to the edges of the zip tape the zip is fixed into that seam of the center back trouser so i'm going to take this to my machine and i'm going to be sewing using my zip footer which has a much narrower foot compared to the normal one that comes with my machine this i actually bought on amazon and has been such a great help especially sewing invisible zips so i'm just sewing on a one centimeter seam allowance joining this side of the zip tape to this side with the zip fix the next thing you need to do is we're going to take that other side of the waistband and we're going to fold it backwards like so and what this will do is to help to finish off this edge of the waistband where the trouser sort of ends so what i'm doing here is i'm just pinning this edge of this waistband like so 
and I'm going to pin the top and the bottom. I'm going to repeat this for the left and for the right hand side. I'm going to be sewing on a 0.5 seam seam allowance closing off this edge of the waistband so i'm just using my zip footer still because that just makes it easier to sew then i'm going to turn this to the other side and close off the top edge of my waistband this might be a bit tricky because of the teeth of your zip but just take your time so you don't break your needle so before you turn this inside out remember to trim the corners of the waistband along these edges here i'm just using my small scissors like so and i'm going to turn this inside out just pull out the zip teeth as much as possible on both of the ends because you want the zip to stop at the same edge when the zip head gets to the end of the zip like so so with that done, we know we can go ahead to focus on our lining and the first thing we need to do is we need to work on the darts. So I've gone ahead and I've pinned my back darts together using the same method I used for the main one, just transferring the dart using a pin, pinning together the notched points and I'm going to be sewing on a normal straight stitch remember to do my back stitch at the beginning and at the end to secure my seam so once i've sewn both back darts i'm going to go ahead and sew my center back seam but just like we did for the main one remember to leave the top edge of this seam open for your zip about 20 centimeters or eight inches depending on the length of your zip so I'm just sewing from the beginning all the way to the end, remembering to do my back stitch at the beginning and at the end to secure this seam. So next up, I'm going to be sewing up my center front seam together so we can join the front panels to the back panels to make the entire full lining for this trouser. So I'm just sewing up here using my normal footer on a one centimeter seam allowance using a normal straight stitch. For next up, you need to join the inner and the outer leg seam. I'm just placing my front trouser lining over my back and i'm just pinning together the sides like so matching notched points and edges i'm also going to pin the entire inner leg so i know once i take this piece to my machine and ready to sew i just focus on joining the pin points together without thinking what actually matches what So I'm going to be sewing up my lining pieces together on a one centimeter seam allowance, joining all of the necessary points. So I have this lining ready to fix onto the inside of my trouser. So that's my lining all stitched up. I use the same stitch length, the same tension, and the same sort of stitch for the main fabric. I use that for the lining as well. So when it comes to joining the lining to the actual main trouser, I tried out a new technique which involves me pinning the lining onto the zip seam allowance and then along the second waistband edge. So I'm just starting off with this edge like so. So I'm pinning along this side of the, the zip seam, pinning lining to the main fabric, which, are, which already has a zip fixed. And then when you get to this edge where the waistband is, you turn towards the waistline of your trouser. So I'm pinning the waistline of my lining to the waistline of the second side of the waistband that we didn't attach to the main trouser itself so you remember to pin that uh, the dart to the notched point side seam to side seam center front to center front so by the time you stitch this entire piece up and you turn it inside out you have the lining fixed on the inside of your trouser so i'm just turning this to the side so you guys can see what i'm doing a bit clearer and i'm just pinning this particular point together lining to waistband i'm going to just keep folding it out as i do so then when i get to this other edge where the other side of the zip sits i will turn the lining in that sort of vertical direction and pin up the other side of the sort of where the zip would sit for the main one into the sort of where the zip is supposed to sit for the lining. I hope that makes sense. This was a little bit tricky to figure out and a little bit tricky to sew. 
And it's one of those things I did in faith because I wasn't sure if it would work. So let's see how it actually turned out. So you should end up with a point that looks like this. And you want to leave this edge open because that's how you're going to turn your lining inside out. And that's how you're going to finish off the hem of your trouser. So I'm going to take this to my machine and I'm going to start from one end. When I get to the other side, turn it towards the direction of the waistline so all the way around and when i get to the other side turn it towards the direction of the zip to finish off joining the lining to the second waistband or the second edge of the waistband of this trouser so now i'm just sewing in the lining on this zip edge like so and when you get to the end you pull it out and then you take this side of the waistband and this side of your lining waistline and you start to sew together so this particular seam is where the waistline is and you start from one end go all the way to the other end and then you turn towards the zip edge of the other side and finish to the bottom so i'm just turning this inside out to see what i've done and to reveal if what i tried out was correct so i'm just pulling my lining inside out and i'm going to tuck it into the trouser and this is what the center back seam should look like at this point you should have that sort of bottom hole at the edge of the zip seam open which would allow you to fix your trouser hem to the lining so to do that you need to fold in the edges like so because you want to ensure that you join your lining hems together in the right directions you don't want to have this twisted somehow so you fold in this edge like so, fold in the lining edge and you pin them together securely. You do this for your left and your right leg. And what you now need to do is you would pull the lining through that hole or that opening that we left at the bottom of the center back seam or where your zip sits. So I'm just going ahead to pin this other edge of this trouser leg and I'm going to go through that opening that we have and I'm going to pull the lining through that opening. Just take your time so the pins don't fall out and when you've successfully pulled out that hem seam you just adjust the pins so it's easier and quicker to sew you can add a few more if you want so by the time you take this to your machine and you join the hem of the lining to the hem of the trouser you have the bottom of your trouser leg sort of figured out I'm going to take this to my domestic machine and I'm going to be sewing on a one centimeter seam allowance, joining the hem of my lining to the hem of my main trouser, starting with one leg. Remember when you do this for one leg, you need to do this for the other leg of your trouser. So you fix both hems of your trouser. So once I get to the end, I remember to do my back stitch to secure my seam. And then I'm going to turn this inside out. So I have the main trouser showing on the outside and the lining tucked in on the inside of your trouser. I'm just going to pull this right through to check that everything went well and it looks really good so far. You would need to press this seam so you have a defined edge for your trouser leg but so far so good it looks really really nice and i'm happy with it just remember to repeat this for the other leg of your trouser so this is what my trouser looks like so far i went ahead to press all seams that i hadn't pressed before with my iron and just to ensure that it looks really nice really neat and i'm loving it so far but there's one more step that we need to do to finish up this trouser which is closing up that hole that we that was helpful when we had to join the lining hem to the main trouser hem so i'm just going to do this using needle and thread because that was the only way i could think of at this point and i just put down some pins to prevent this whole piece from moving around in a way that i didn't want so i'm starting from the bottom and i did like an invisible sort of stitch that you didn't see a lot of thread but i went behind the fabric itself i came out on the right side and i joined up the bottom of that sort of zip seam or like the lining seam on the bottom of the zip and when i got to the edge where the zip was opened i started to join the lining to the zip itself so i was careful not to ensure that my thread didn't show on the right side of the trouser because i didn't want that so you can do um 
a backstage, a cross stitch, whichever stitch works for you. Just ensure that it doesn't really show a lot on the inside of the trouser because that's something that I think looks really, really good. So this is my trouser all done. I gave it a bit of press to relax all my seams and I really like how comfortable it fits. There's nothing more satisfying that finishing a garment and it actually fits you and you're comfortable you can eat you can sit and you can style it with heels or with flats but i hope you guys enjoyed watching this video all the same if you did please give this video a thumbs up comment all of your thoughts and ideas down below and wherever you are have a good morning afternoon and evening wherever you are bye